Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a Wednesday night prayer service and Bible study. It's great to be together again, and I hope that everyone that was able to participate in our Wednesday night virtual dinner tonight enjoyed that experience. So far, our Zoom meetings have been, I think, really important for us to be able to see each other and hear each other's voices during this time of isolation and social distancing. We have to be more intentional about hearing each other's voice, more intentional about seeing each other's faces while staying healthy at home. So tonight, we uh, worship the Lord our God joyfully, excited to be in His presence, excited to be unified by His Spirit across this distance. So let's begin tonight by singing worthy of worship, because God truly is worthy.
those places in life where I've experienced God in these extraordinary circumstances of life, whether at home or traveling from home to here to back to home. Here are some of the things that came to my mind I'd like to share with you. One of the praises is the opportunity to participate in virtual fellowship meals and prayer time as we're doing in this very moment. Another praise is the creativity in maintaining connection among our church family. Ways that people are maintaining the staying at home but staying connected with each other in meaningful ways. Praises being the faithfulness of this church to support with their finances the work of God in this place and around the world. For the general good health of our congregation at a time when it has been challenging when someone has had an issue to be able to respond. But generally, we celebrate good health. From healing of some of our members who've had falls, then to rehab and now we're home again, and we celebrate that. And to celebrate as I look out the window and I see the flowers and the trees, the leaves as they are budding out, the animals as they're becoming more active, the beauty of spring is being one of my favorite seasons of the year. Those being places where I've experienced God, and I want to offer praises to Him and invite you to think about those places for you where you have experienced something you want to praise God for. We also share prayer concerns. As I've thought about some things to focus my mind on as we pray, I thought about those facing illness, both the COVID-19 illness, but also those who are experiencing other illness, who are, who are wanting to have their health restored. Praying for wisdom for those who are leaders in our city, in our state, and in our nation, as they prepare for us to be able to get back to a more normal life hopefully soon. Praying for those among our families who are facing emotional turmoil, who are experiencing depression and anxiety, who struggle with addictions. Praying for those in our communities, our neighbors, who are facing financial crises because of loss of jobs and all of the instability that creates in them. And for families that are facing grief, grief that comes in many forms, grief that may be from the death of someone, but it may also be from the loss of a job, from a loss of security, from a loss of connection. So as you think about those things and those places where you want to offer praise and you want to offer a petition to God, would you bow with me as I lead us in a time of prayer? Almighty God, in Jesus Christ you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by the Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. We offer our praises to you for your faithful presence in our lives, in the life of this congregation. As we creatively find ways to be connected with each other, your spirit has been evident in the care and community we have experienced. Your spirit has been evident as the awakening of this world in this time of spring as we have witnessed reaching out and making a difference in the lives of those who are struggling. We also come to you offering our prayers for the world. We bring to mind those who are facing illness, 
those names and faces that we bring into our minds in this moment. Some who are physically ill. Some who are struggling in other ways other than physically. We pray not only for those who are experiencing illness, but for the family and medical personnel who are providing care for each one. We pray that the impact of the social distancing and interruptions to our jobs and financial security and our community support would be lessened. That we would find ways to maintain connection safely. That we would reach out to those for whom financial and job security is, has been shattered and be a support to them. We pray for those who grieve, especially those who grieve the death of family and friends. May the comfort of your presence surround them, even when the arms of friends are, are not there. May the words that we offer be the presence of your spirit with them. We pray for the mission of the church, this church and the church around the world, that your people would be a faithful witness to your love and grace, that as your people we would spread the gospel message to the ends of the earth. O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. As we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I mean, as you've seen, hopefully, around in the evenings here in Kentucky, a lot of people have been lighting their homes up, their businesses, government buildings, street lights, uh, turning them green. Green is a color of hope and renewal. And this time, even though it's very difficult, can definitely be a time of renewal in our lives, in our families, in our spiritual walk with God. In many other ways. And so, even though right now uh, maybe you're tired, maybe you're feeling beat down by the burden of life in a difficult situation, maybe you're feeling worn out by the stress, but God is here for us to give us peace, to lift us up, and to help us through this difficult time. And that gives us the strength to, to do that for other people as well. So let's join together as we sing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, a prayer that we can't find renewal. But before we can find that renewal, we have to get back to some sort of new normal and feel okay. So let's pray to God and help us with that. Peace. 
Tonight I'd like to read a passage of scripture from the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John. As we are still in the Easter season, celebrating and reflecting on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, John writes these words. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from the land, only about a hundred yards. Now this incident in John's Gospel takes place um, on the heels of Jesus uh, appearing to Mary Magdalene after he had been raised from the dead. And then John records in the 20th chapter of John's Gospel that uh, Jesus appeared uh, to his disciples on the evening of his resurrection uh, and uh, showed them his hands and his side uh, and that he had commissioned them, he had sent them, uh, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And Jesus had breathed on them the Holy Spirit and uh, commissioned them to be emissaries uh, ambassadors as Paul puts it, of reconciliation in this world. So they had been through this experience with Jesus appearing to them and commissioning them and giving them work to do. Uh, Jesus breathing on them the power of this life-giving spirit of God in, in order to be able to do what it was that God was calling them to do. Uh, John also reports that Thomas wasn't with them. And so a week later, uh, when the disciples and Thomas were together, Jesus appears to them again and invites Thomas uh, to put his hands in Jesus' wounded hands and to stick his hands in Jesus' pierced side. And Thomas falls down and cries out, My Lord and my God. Uh, the basic Christian uh, confession of faith, uh, if you will. And then knowing that the disciples had been through all of that, that they had heard the testimony of Mary Magdalene, that they had seen Jesus in the upper room, that they had experienced a, a call and the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus saying to them, from now on, you're going to be my representative. You're going to, in a sense, be me in this world as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Makes this story in the 21st chapter of John's Gospel so incredible. And yet so typical. Not just of the disciples, but perhaps also of us. Here they had been to the mountaintop with Jesus. They, they had seen the risen Jesus. And they had, they had talked with him and fellowship with him. He had, he had given them a new reason for living. He, he had brought them into the very presence of God, breathing on them the Holy Spirit, appearing the second time and confirming to them in the face of Thomas uh, that, that he was risen from the dead. But then for some strange reason, Peter decides not that he's going to go and do what Jesus commissioned him to do, not that he's going to go and continue the ministry of Jesus in the world, but he just decides, I think I'm going to go fishing. I think I'm going to go do something else. Nothing better to do. Can't figure out what I'm supposed to do. Don't just go fishing. And then all the other disciples say, well, hey, we'll go with you. We haven't got anything better to do. It 
It just amazes me. And yet it shouldn't, because I know I've been there in my life. I've had these mountaintop experiences with God. Uh, those of us who grew up in Baptist life in the 60s, in the 70s, maybe even the 50s, uh, know that one of the places we used to love to go uh, as a church was the Ridgecrest or the Glorietta to the Baptist Conference Centers there where we would spend a week in worship and, and study and we'd spend a week with, with our fellow church persons and, and it would be a mountaintop experience and everybody would come back all charged up to either do Sunday school really well because you went to Sunday school week or to do training union really well because you went to training union week or, or the choir and the musicians boy they were going to really do a great great music ministry after having been to music week at Ridgecrest. Then you get home, life starts going back to normal, and all of a sudden, all those great, those great promises you made, all those great intentions you had about really doing everything well for the Lord, going and doing the Lord's work in Bible study and training you and, and, and deacons and, and music ministry and the like. Well, let me just go fishing. We'll just go back to the way things are. Now, I can imagine that that must have been pretty frustrating for Jesus. I mean, here he shows up to them in a room where they're locked because they're afraid. And he, he says to them, don't be afraid, it's me. And then look at me, and he breathes on them the Holy Spirit, commissions them to go and do what the Father had commissioned him to do. And of course, some of them were still having doubts. He comes back a week later and shows up for Thomas, on, and, and, and Thomas makes this great declaration. And then they go fishing. And as frustrating as Jesus may have been with that, he still did not give up on them. They're out there on, on, on the lake fishing, struggling all night long, didn't catch a thing. And Jesus, I can just picture this. And Jesus shows up on the shore, and I, and I kind of imagine that Jesus may have been there all day long as they were struggling. He may have been sitting there on the beach watching as they were struggling, trying to catch fish, as they were, as they were, as they were going here and going there and, and getting frustrated. And when the morning comes, where they can see Jesus on the beach, he calls out to them, that caught me thing, have you? They said, no. And he says, well, try it over here. And all of a sudden, they catch a boatload of fish. And then they recognize that it's Jesus. And we have read on in the 21st chapter of John's Gospel, we realize that Jesus has a conversation with Peter. And he says to Peter, the one who said, I'm going fishing, the one who drug all the other disciples astray, to go fishing. He looks at Peter and he says, Peter, do you love me? Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Three times Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And each time the Lord asked Jesus, now, Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter responds affirmatively. Jesus said, well, then you need to be feeding my sheep. In other words, I don't know why you drug all these people off fishing. You have work to do. You have a call. I, I commission you and all these other disciples to go in my name to represent the Father and God's reconciling, healing, saving love. And Peter, you need to get about doing it. One of the reasons why I think that John included this story in, in his gospel is because he knew that our tendency is to have high mountaintop experiences with God and get all excited with the presence of God, get all thrilled with the presence of God, get emotional and then get supercharged, but then to allow those feelings to dissipate and not follow through. And Davis, professor of mine at Southern Seminary in social work used to say that the work of God isn't done on the mountaintop. That the work
work of God is actually done in the valley. It's not done up here where we're all supercharged and excited. It's done down here in the valley where we have to toil and we have to work and we have to depend upon the presence of the Spirit of God that God gives us to help us know where to go and know what to do. It's almost as if John is reminding us we can't stay in the room. We can't stay in the sanctuary. We can't stay in the prayer closet. We can't stay in Ridgecrest or Loreana or whatever the camp you may have gone to and felt specifically close to the Lord. We have to go into the world empowered by the Holy Spirit to heal and to teach and to call and to invite people to the life and the life that comes in Jesus Christ. We pray. Lord, we are grateful that you know our tendency. That you know our tendency to Get all excited and then go fishing. And we're grateful that you don't just leave us out in the boat in the sea, but that you come to rescue us even from ourselves. We thank you for calling us. We pray that you would help us to have a spirit of faithfulness as we seek to be disciples of Jesus Christ this world. Amen. Amen. During this time, I hope that we remember that even though Jesus Christ, our Savior, experienced loneliness and isolation and difficulty, that we don't have to anymore because we have the Spirit of God with us. We have our Heavenly Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, all present to us at all times. And we don't have to be like the disciples and think, well, where's Jesus? What do we do now? Jesus is here with us, the resurrected Christ. So as we sing this next song, we'll work until Jesus comes. I pray that we can remember to continue the work of Christ every day of our life to practice presence of God in our life, remembering throughout the day that God is with you, God is with us. And then even uh, one day when we face death, we know that we don't face it alone. Christ died alone on the cross, but we will die full in Christ. So we have nothing to fear today. Let's uh, worship God as we sing our last hymn, we'll work until Jesus comes. Thank you. 